it's just a good time to be around here listening to uh here with me the voice of DeFi. and today i've got a fire token for you to learn about where you can learn about voice token now voice has nothing to do with me don't don't uh, start thinking that oh no the voice of DeFi is starting his own token no you wouldn't you wouldn't want that my tokenomics would be messed up i wouldn't rug pull you but i wouldn't make you any money either so uh that, that wouldn't be good and even more importantly I wouldn't help out anybody, uh, any charity organizations uh, at all. So uh, I would just be an awful investment. So don't do my voice. How about this voice token? How are you doing today? Good. Yeah, I, I hope the lighting is OK here. I'm, I'm stuck in a, a corner of the house when all the kids are gone to bed. So trying to get some <laughs> lighting is always tough. <laughs> Man, I can absolutely uh, understand that. I've got a couple of children myself and it is tough to hide sometimes to get that's in the it, little corner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But good I, for I, you. I, you I, you've got I, I've got six of the little rascals running around, you know, four girls and two boys. So it's a full house. Oh, yeah, you are CEO of more than just uh, the voice token. So everybody, this is Stephen Collins. He is the CEO of voice token and also the CEO of his household. Or maybe those six uh, little ones are probably more the CEO of the household at times more than uh, they seem to run the household more than I do sometimes in my own household. So before we really just get started, and I really want to dig deep into voice token today. I want to know a little bit more about you. Where, where'd you get started in crypto? What What was your first time you dipped your toe into the crypto world? Um, like I, I've been working in tech for for nearly twenty five years, you know, or just shy of twenty five years, and um, so I was always very aware of Bitcoin in in its early days, but but you know, in earshot, but never had really attempted to, to buy it or really fully understand what it was about. Um, and I got invited to a tech conference where there was a few people chatting about cryptocurrencies a little bit more in depth than maybe what I had been used to hearing. And, and and that was kind of the start for me. Like That's going back a good number of years ago. And I remember taking the plunge um, and buying Bitcoin. It was about $2,000 at the time. Um, when, when I when I first started buying it, you know, I, I bought it at about two thousand, sold it at about sixteen thousand, and I was delighted with that. But, um, I but I was doing a lot of day trading as well. I I, I used to write automated uh, bots for day trading in forex, oil, commodities, you know, gold, things like that. You know, the the, the pound dollar index, these kind of things. So I, I was very familiar with with those kind of things, reading the charts, understanding the patterns, and um, and then I just incorporated crypto into that side of my life as a hobby. You know starting to auto trade on, on cryptos but in the early days that was not really feasible because the spreads and the commissions were just too high so you couldn't really make make any money off them and 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 i kind of grew from there and i, I did that for a number of years but I, I kind of went from day trading then to just purchasing straight out different currencies you know litecoins and the cardanos and bitcoin and all the other kind of stable coins that came out a couple of years back and and, and started purchasing those and buying and selling them manually um, and and you know won some and lost some like like everybody else didn't always get it right you know and um, but what i did notice as we all have noticed over the last few years is that you know, the stable coins that we see out there have been attacked by a host of crap coins. You know, That's it's right. literally the Wild West out there. And and that drives me mad as a technologist to see, like, I, I'm all about blockchain. Um, and, and as my profile states, I was the former head of blockchain for one of Ireland's largest tech research centers. So, and and, and that kind of happened as a, as a result of my day trading and, and, and being the kind of the crypto guy in-house. So, um, you know, I, I dealt with a lot of companies more to do, not so much with the crypto side of things, actually more to do with industry, which was really, really interesting, DLT technology and so on, and, and, and seeing where that could go. And I think we haven't really, I'll talk about that later, but I think there's there's a massive opportunity in that there as well. But um, so, yeah, I, you know, it, it, it all started to fall into place. I started seeing the rubbish that was out there and, and decided to kind of do something about it. I wasn't really sure, you know, two, three years ago, how I was going about you know, I was going to go about doing that, but I knew I wanted to do something, and um, I just wasn't quite sure what it was. And um, you know, it, it it kind of coupled with my 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 view of of the homeless around the world. I've always had an affinity, or certainly, um, in in the last ten years of my life, I've had an affinity with 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 the homeless. And and you know, a lot of that results from the fact that I, I went through a tough financial situation um, a, a while back and, and nearly lost my house and. 
had to go through. Now, thankfully, I didn't. I got through it. But but at the time, um, you know, I spent a year or two, you know, fighting the banks for repossession and, and, and you know, wondering how I would tell my wife and kids were moving into the back of the car, you know. Um, and I, I remember at that point in time making kind of a promise to myself that, you know, if I ever got out the other side of this, that, you know, I was going to do something for the homeless. Um, I didn't know what that was going to be at all. You know, was it going to be, you know, throwing five dollars or five euros at every guy that I saw on the street? I didn't know, but I just kind of knew I wanted to do something. But and and the two worlds collided then. Um the homeless and, and the cryptocurrency. And I decided let's let's combine the two. Let's let's bring out a genuine token and forget all the, the rug pulls and all the scams that are there. Bring out something genuine and and have a genuine goal, both technically and you know morally. And and that's where we are today. We're you know kind of two years down the line from the first, I suppose, thoughts of putting it together to actually being, you know, literally a week away from from launch. Man, your story is really interesting to me because you've had, I mean, you got on the cusp of homelessness yourself, but at the same time, you were involved in Bitcoin early. You bought, you know, 2000 bucks of it. You sold it for an 8X. You said you sold it for 16000 You were writing automated bots. You've got all this experience in crypto or at least the financial world, okay, and even technology, you know, writing bots and that sort of thing. Then you've also got, you know, so that's like the one that we want to shine the, the spotlight on. But then you've also got all this experience in almost losing it all. Um, you know, you, you've got a family. You, you, you've just said that. This must have been, uh, you know, and the funny, tearing the funny, you down. Thing, the funny thing is, or the ironic thing is, um, I nearly lost it all as a result of the property boom that the whole world crashed from, you know, <laughs> seven or eight. So I, I actually nearly lost everything as a result of buying properties, which I'm now hoping to to get back to putting a roof over people's heads again, you know. So uh, an industry I thought I'd never get back or touch again because it, it had stained me so much. Yeah, right. Well, it's, it's I, centralized you know, finance. Yeah, it's centralized yeah, finance that bit you. Absolutely. So yeah. So so luckily, and 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 I suppose when I was doing all of those things, I never realized that they'd all combine in 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 time to to bring us to where we are. That was never my plan getting into day trading. That was never my plan when I managed to save my house. That was never my plan when when these things happened. But but I suppose it's like anybody who who ventures into any business that they want to do. You take your past experiences and you know good and bad, and you, you combine them, and and hopefully they they come out the far side shining shining of light. You know. Well, to me, it's people that can do that, that end up being successful and helping others that don't just look at their situation and think, oh, woe is me. I can't believe I found myself in this situation. Instead, I love that you said, like, if I ever get out of this, I really want to do something to be able to help others that could potentially be in the situation because you know how it feels like. I mean, uh, yeah, look, I, 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 I promise I, I, we I, will I, get into, I promise yeah. we will get into the voice token, but I want to hear kind of how close you were to, yeah. you know, literally. I, I, asking I, for I, was, I was days away, like literally away from, you know, packing the bags out of the house and, and, you know, we were already selling stuff from the house to try and, you know, cover what we owed, you know, it was crazy. But the thing was, like, I, I owed more money to the bank at that point um, than I could ever have paid back in a lifetime anyway. It, you know, it, and, and that was because in, in Ireland, as as probably happened in a lot of countries around the world at that time, the banks were just throwing money out left, right and centre. And, right. you know, of course, I put my hand up and I said, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll have some of that and I'll buy properties and I'll rent them out. And I, I had a plan that I was going to be this, you know, exceptionally wealthy property magnate. <laughs> Literally, yeah. like, later that the whole world would collapse and you know i'd practically lose like i lost everything except the house i managed to keep the house um but but had to fight for a good few years to do that and 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 probably one of the most stressful times of my life would have been that period um, sure, and you know, it doesn't get much worse than that yeah it's, it's horrible and, and i think it's always worse when you have kids because you know how do you tell the kids that you know this is no longer home and i didn't know how we we're going to do that. You know, when you're struggling to put food on the table and when you're struggling to pay just the standard bills, you keep the lights on, you know, and, and you've exhausted all of the people in your network that you can borrow 20 bucks from, you know, like where do you, yeah. where do you, so it, it, it's a very hard time, but look, I was one of the lucky ones. Not everyone is, I suppose, lucky enough to come out the far side. I did. Um, I got back on my feet and I, I you know, I, I was very heavily involved in tech and have been for a long time. But, you know, it really it really focused me in terms of where I was going and what I wanted to do. So, um, you know, I became a senior research fellow in inside in, in, in the research center in Cork in Ireland. And that's just, I suppose, a fancy term for, for someone who, who, who researches new technologies. Um, 
um, technologies that generally you won't see in the marketplace for a number of years, you know. So, um, so yeah, we, we, we did that. I did that. And, and you know, I came out the far side. I, I've been in the tech space so long. I, I founded a few companies. Um, one of them was probably the most notable one was back in 2015. After I kind of got back on my feet, I founded a tech company, which we developed interactive school desks. And we went out to a, a show in Las Vegas, a, a tech conference in, in 2015. And at the time, actually, we, we literally had just founded the company. We didn't even have a bank account in the company. And we were both the best tech startup in, in 2015 out of about 600 companies. So, And that must have been really, I mean, forgetting about getting into voice uh, token, that must have been really cool to be able to get, you know, one of the best, te- you know, startups there and to win that yeah. after what it, you had it, been it, in already. It, 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 it kind of made no sense that we had gone or I had gone from where I was to, to that point. And um, now as it transpired, I, I spent three years there, sold out and, and moved on. But um but but you know you you evolved you know that's the way it is so you know my my, my next goal is and in fact just to leave people know like I, i've been saying all over my profile and you'll see it on linkedin that i'm the former head of blockchain the reason i'm the former head of blockchain is i've actually left the research center and i've taken i've taken a, a short-term role that coincides with what we're doing with voice token so i've actually taken a role with one of ireland's largest homeless organizations and um, so I, I think it's important for me to to know see what's actually going on on the ground, you know, um, as opposed to just being the guy who sees that three in the morning after coming to a pub, you know, this kind of thing. So, so yeah, I've I've, I've done. That. So I think it, it it ties in very nicely with what we want to do with 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 our with our roadmap, you know. Excellent, excellent. So l- let's jump right into this project. I feel like we've gotten a good sense for what motivates you to to make this project, but let's jump right into it. Tell me a bit about voice token and how it be more might be more than just a good investment for holders. Sure. So um, I, I really want to take, I suppose, my tech experience. Okay. Um, and, you know, I've dealt with a lot of companies uh, using blockchain. I've worked with a lot of companies that want to try and use blockchain, don't quite understand what are the best commercial ways to do that. Um, completely unrelated to the crypto side of things, actually. But, but, but taking that experience, if you look at what's going on, okay, the amount of rubbish that is out there, and that's all I can call it. it. It's crap coins, shit coins, rug pulls that are left, right, center, and it's driving me absolutely mad. You know, if, if your coin doesn't have the term dodge, floki, baby, in it, it's, it, it, what are people thinking? And then a week or two later, they, they kind of realize they've been rug pulled and they wonder why. And I'm thinking, hold on a second, something's got to change in this industry because blockchain as a technology is phenomenal and the things we can do with it. But if, if blockchain is going to be indirectly tarnished by the crap that's going on, well, then we're in trouble. So um, it, it's time to kind of put a stop to it. I, I'm not saying that we're going to stop it, but certainly, you know, we're going to try and stop it. So, you know, our, the ecosystem that we've penciled out in terms of our roadmap is a very comprehensive ecosystem. And, um, you know, starting with obviously the Binance Smart Chain, you know, we're going to piggyback on the Binance Smart Chain as a starting point. There's a very simple reason for that. And um, it's the fastest way of doing it. Okay, it's the fastest way for us to 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 build a platform for where we want to move to. Okay, and where where we actually want to move to is our own blockchain, and we have a whole bunch of reasons why we want to do that. So, um, it is called Voice Chain. So we want to eventually move Voice Token off of Binance and onto onto Voice Chain. But Voice Chain is going to become a blockchain where other charities and um, with with different angles. You know, it might be a charity for water it might be a charity for food it might be whatever for hunger whatever whatever it may be then you know for children so on and so forth you know that they can have a safe environment a trust a trusted environment where they can launch and not be in the mix with all these other dodge floki elon coins we, we don't want any of that rubbish okay so, and so so that's a key thing and, and it'll be a very charity focused ecosystem okay so that's one of the reasons we want to to have our, our, our own blockchain the second reason we want to have our own blockchain is because we want to build other things we don't want to just allow other coins on us we, we want to do other things in as well and um, one of those is obviously we want to have our own wallet uh, you know there's lots of wallets out there there's no reason why we need to do a wallet but it makes absolute no sense not to do one if we have our own blockchain i think it would be, it would be stupid not to so we're going to do a wallet it'll be called voice wallet where you where you can trade voice uh, tokens uh, fairly seamlessly and obviously if, you know we, we pick some of the other stable coins or whatever whatever's there at the time you know um a, a lot might fall off the radar in the next six months who knows but but we'd certainly pick some some major coins to, to be able to trade as well we're developing a technology, not a technology, but a, a platform called Voice Vote. Uh, Voice Vote has a couple of, I suppose, key features to it. The first key feature, which we're actually launching, 
I reckon probably in four or five weeks' time, um, the beta version, which will just be a web version for now, will allow people to vote on which nominate firstly and then vote on which charities around the world should receive the money. So it's all very well, you know, me and my team, um, you know, picking this up. Um, but, but hey, I, let me uh, let me stop you right there because I want to ask about yeah. this voice vote because I had a few questions on some of these things. Sure. Uh, so for voice vote, is this going to be a decentralized type of voting? Is this like a DAO? Or is this going to be, uh, you know, something that you could do within, you know, like the Telegram voting system? How, what's going to be the backbone for? for no, it, 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 look, it, it'll definitely go through a couple of evolutions. OK, so, you know, version one, it, we will eventually get to a, a decentralized. There's no doubt. And that is certainly the, the final goal. But that's not going to be the first version that we roll out. You know, the very first version is going to be a very basic web version where people can, can go to the site, nominate their charities, put in reasons why the charity should receive money. Obviously, we're working to moderate in the background that these are legitimate charities. You know, we don't want sure, sure. You know, incorporating a charity overnight and, and by the way, getting a donation. <laughs> and then getting a your donation. Right? For it. Like, yeah. So, you know, there's got to be some sort of human interaction in terms of of where the money does go in terms of moderating that. So but we will give that voice back to the community. And that's, again, you know, using the term voice. It's. I, I don't want to be, or me and my team combined, don't want to be the ones that are entirely responsible for that. We want to make sure that the community votes and decides where that goes. But eventually, yes, you're right. That will have to be, you know, decentralized. We can't just, you know, keep that on a, on a web-based platform. But, but starting out, it will be there. Um, well, and I always ask that because everybody wants everything to be so decentralized. But the fact of the matter is decentralization is a process. It's not something you get on day one. I mean, Bitcoin, I said this this morning, uh, was it one person, you know, all the Bitcoin in the world was in with one person originally and originally, you know, eventually it got to be decentralized. So yeah, it's, it's good that you're doing that. So you want to also have this voice wallet. And one thing you said that I thought was interesting is you think that if you have your own blockchain, then a, a having your own wallet is kind of a necessity. I kind of agree okay. with that, but what's your thinking on it? I, I, it's not that it's a necessity, but I think if we didn't have it, people would ask why, you know, so sure. It's, it's certainly not a showstopper. If we didn't bring out Voice Wallet, I don't think it'll have any real impact in the rest of what we want to do. But again, it, it just it stops the naysayers. Why don't they have their own wallet? You know, they've done all these other things. Why not have a wallet? So my view is, well, why not? You know, let's let's do it. It's, it's not that we can't build it. The technology easy part. It's it's ensuring that we've got the community to adopt it is always going to be the tricky part. Building building that community over time, you know, and you know, doing AMAs like this are, are a start of that process, building the community, building the trust in what where we're going and what we want to do. And you know, hopefully in time when people do see us roll out this technology in 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 in, in the milestones that we have, that trust will be will be cemented, you know. That's awesome. So in a true AMA format, uh, I, I have a question from the audience, and I feel like sometimes sure. I don't even ask these, but I want to ask this because I think it's good. It's from another Stephen, which, by the way, he's Stephen, I'm Stephen, and you're Stephen. So, uh, sure. again, Airdrop leads the world in the amount of Stevens. But uh, he says, I'm curious if Voice as its own chain would be an ETH clone like BSC, for example, or share properties with something like Solana. Building your own blockchain that enables smart contracts is a monumental task that's actually only been done a handful of times ever. Absolutely. Is Voice open to launching on another smart contract chain, perhaps? The answer is yes, we are open to it, but we have not made the decision yet. Okay, that, that's the, the reality of it. Like, I, I, I'm under no illusions of the vast undertaking of creating your own you know, Ethereum, your own Solano, your own whatever it might be. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not necessarily daunted by it. But I do understand the 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 vast undertaking that's involved in it. Um, you know, I, I think the key thing for us is making the decision as the team would be based around the commercials around that, not just what it's going to cost and the time it's going to take, but but where are we going to be in 10 or 15 years time? If we invest our time and effort into being, you know, an ETH clone, as an example, is that the right thing for us? It might be the right thing, the right thing for us for the next two or three years, but but do we want to spend that time and effort and then realize, actually, no, we shouldn't have gone that road, you know? So, you know, that decision won't be made certainly till 2022. We're not going to be making it this side of Christmas, um, but it's a great question. And, and look, as soon as we know, you know, we'll, we'll tell you. Sure, I, I get that completely. And he's right in that, you know, making your own blockchain, that's obviously a big thing. But one thing that's, I think, a little different than, say, you know, the big boom and bust in 2017, when a lot of people were trying their own blockchain, is now people are starting their projects on a known chain like BSC, like what you're trying to do. You can get established, you can get your feet under you, you can get a community, yeah. you can get everything that you need. 
And then once you think the time is right, you know, then you can join in and, and make this other chain, you know, that you want to do. I think if you did that as step one, you know, tried to make your own chain as yeah. step one, that, that would That's be a tough. Big hurdle. That's a very big hurdle to jump as your first hurdle. Um, it, for me, commercially, that is not the right thing to do <laughs> as a starting point. And again, I said at the well, that's why, you know, we have piggybacked on Binance. It's, it's the obvious thing to do at the start. You know, that gives us the the ability to prove ourselves, to build trust, to build our team as well. You know, like we're a team of seven now. You know, we, we have a long way to go to to build out where we want to get to. Um, but it also gives us the ability to build up our resources, both financially and otherwise. So, um, you know, I, I, I don't want to bite off more than we can chew at this stage, but I know... I know the size of the pie, <laughs> you know, I, I know where we want to go, but you know, it's, it's baby steps. It's baby steps. Yeah, 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 of course it's baby steps. And, and it seems to be that you're doing it right by, well, first of all, coming on here, using airdrop, you're just building that community uh, slowly, sure. but surely. So one thing you just said, you said you have a team of seven, but then yes. on your website, you also have, it says voice token is the brainchild of three Irish entrepreneurs. So That's I'm right. assuming Three of those seven are these three entrepreneurs, yes, and that, then you- no, that's absolutely that, yeah. There's myself, Steve Collins, my COO, Chief uh, Operating Officer Paul Clancy, and then Brendan O'Regan is who is our CMO. So we would have been the, the three key guys. Um, you know, obviously I would have been the the key guy initially with with the the the, the concept, as it were. You know, the the post-it note idea, and. Um, and I coordinated with Paul, who I've known for many years, and you know I suppose it evolved. And then Brendan came to the to the mix through Paul, and um, it, it seemed like a nice fit. You know, it seemed like a good fit. So we 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 started with the three of us, and obviously with the world that we live in, there's there's no such thing as offices anymore. You know, so it's, it's not like right. <laughs> no, there's there's it's not like there's seven of us sitting down on desks at, at nine a.m. in the morning wondering what to do for the day. So you know right. we, have, we have people in Holland, we have people in Canada, and and I'm quite sure. Look, you know. I'm getting C. I got two more CVs today, you know. So for for the for the tech team, and and they're based one in India and one in Persia, you know. So who knows? You know, we're going to have a very diverse global team. And um, but again, I, I think the key thing for us, is it's easy to find people, but it's hard to find good people, and it's even harder to find good people in this industry in this space because it is literally. You know, someone that you feel you know or you can trust in this industry can turn around in two seconds and, and you realize you don't know them at all. Um, and, and again, that's why, look, you know, a simple thing is me having this video on as opposed to just an audio call. I think it's important for people to see me. I do exist. I'm here. And uh, Check the profiles. You know, I'm all about transparency. I'm all about, you know, making sure that we're accountable you know, in, in everything we do. So I want people to make sure that they look at who we are, what we're about. You know, I know we're KYC and docs. But we, we've seen we've seen issues over the last few days, the last weeks of people that have been that have still been rope pulled, you know. So, you know, I think it's it's important we go an extra step. You know, I'm here, I'm holding my hand up, I exist, check us out. Then, you know, because of my previous roles, you know, you could probably track down my home address in about 20 minutes. You know what I mean? So. <laughs> well, I, I appreciate that you yeah. came on here on video, first of all. And everybody check out that that smooth shave. I mean, that is uh, smooth <laughs> as a baby's yeah, butt right there. Yeah. That's why I keep rubbing it. I only shaved about four him. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's good. Uh, uh, I, I'm a, I'm a bearded fellow now, but uh, I used to uh, use like an actual safety razor, and uh, I always okay. can appreciate a, a a really nice shave there. So you've got these other members in your team, and you said Holland, Canada, Ireland, and then you know you said you know three Irish entrepreneurs. I can they they may be in Ireland, they may not. Uh, yeah, is this hard to communicate with your team? Not at all. Look, look the world we live in. You know, there's pick your platform. You know, what do you want to negotiate on? You know, so here well, we are. Well, I'm more thinking of time zone. I'm more thinking of you yeah. know somebody's got sleep. The, the time zone can be tricky. There's no doubt, and I think we we've all experienced that. Even with AMAs, getting the right time to get the right amount of people on, and you know what demographic you're going to get, or you know geographically based on on the time your AMA is on. You know, like I've, I've, as sure. a good example. Two AMAs tomorrow, but they're two or three hours apart, you know. So, um, trying to fit with with what's in that group, but you're not going to get it right all the time. And um, you know, if had we hosted this AMA this morning at midday my time, who knows? We'd got on a whole new uh, selection of people on it, and their thoughts and and processes and how they choose their their coins and tokens to invest in might be completely different to the people that are on now. 
I'm so yeah. glad you understand that. Being an AMA host, yeah. you know, I do it at all, all different times. Yeah. But you're right. It brings in a whole different audience depending mm -hmm. on what time you do the AMA. And sometimes that's good. Sometimes people want to do multiple Absolutely. endings for different times. And that's also why we record this. Uh, we'll put it on the Airdrop YouTube channel so that people can see it uh, if they can't hear it live but i like it when people come live because you know we had steven that asked that question earlier um about the blockchain you know being on your own blockchain mm -hmm. and i think i always think it's good to be able to do live so you can experience it both as i'm asking and if you've got your own question to be able to ask so another thing and by the way i recommend everybody read the voice token white paper it's voicetoken.com. If somebody can put a link to that yeah. in the uh, main chat, it's voicetoken.com. And right up above, they have a menu, and it's got tokenomics and roadmap and everything you would expect there to be. But right in the middle there, there's a nice white paper. Thank you, Tom. Uh, right in there, there's a nice white paper. Well, if you will click on that white paper, you can see all that they discuss, including their own blockchain, including voice wallet. But also, one of the things that they said is that they want a voice vote, voice wallet. Let me make sure I'm going to this right, because one of them I want to talk about. Yeah, voice yeah. market. So tell me yeah. about voice market. Is this for just NFTs, like digital goods, or is this could be like physical goods and services? Yeah, so, yeah, I, 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 great question, okay? I, I have toyed with what to call this for, for a while. I, I chose voice market in the end. So it's effectively two things, okay? And it, it will be... I'm promoting it primarily at this stage as an NFT marketplace because, you know, people are all hyped and buzzed about that. Um, but, but again, going back to, I suppose, my experience working with industry in, in the blockchain space um, and companies that are looking at you know, taking cryptocurrency payments, and you see Elon Musk talking about it all the time, will Tesla take Dogecoin, this kind of stuff. But, you know, we're going to be in a world of, you know, the next five, ten years where industry taking cryptocurrency payments is going to be just absolutely commonplace, not not the rare select few. And um, so, so voice market will actually be both NFT marketplace, but also a, a place where uh, third party providers can sell their services and goods using voice token as, as the token currency or the transactional currency on, 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 on it. So they'll be able to both their own websites, but also through our marketplace as well. So dare I say a little mini eBay, mini Amazon, but literally obviously mini, depending on how many, how many providers we, we, we can partner with. But now we're already in discussions with three or four partners right now, two of which are based in Ireland, um, that are looking at that. But they obviously know the time frame for this isn't going to be next week. But, but again, they're looking at how can we sell our services and, and maybe do it through crypto? What does it look like? They feel that if they accept cryptocurrency payments, it's going to, you know, widen their audience in terms of people buying things. And, and I tend to agree with them. Absolutely. So, it, you know, voice market will be twofold, NFTs and others, you know, every, and, and everything else. <laughs> but in well, terms yeah, I, I think like, it's great. And I'm glad that you actually are thinking about voice market and some of the other things. And here's why. I'm not necessarily what I'm about to say is not going to say that I'm down on charity tokens overall. Mm -hmm. But I don't I think we're all selfish enough to where the you know charity and philanthropy is not just enough of a reason for somebody to invest in a token. They might. There's mm -hmm. some people that might. But usually you need something else of a use case. And like you said, maybe there's a you know the market involved, something mm -hmm. where they can buy and it puts that pressure about okay, I could buy goods and services through voice mm -hmm. market and that'll give me a reason to get voice tokens and then I feel good about if I buy this good or service or NFT or whatever, mm. then I, I feel good about some of this is going to help sure. the homeless. So, so, so I, I, if I can just actually jump in on that point, because I'd like to explain, um, primarily because I've been asked this a couple of times over the last week or two, um, but but how is, the, how is all that going to work with 9% transaction fee? And it's sure. a really good how the hell are you, you know, if someone wants to buy a pair of Nike runners, I'm not paying 9% extra, you know, or, 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 or the the retailer doesn't want to lose 9% just because we're giving to charity. So it becomes sure. a very different dynamic economically when you go down that road, um, and which is, again, a challenge. So how, how do we do that? And and I feel at this stage in time, the reality is a 9% transaction fee can't realistically work unless someone's willing to take that hit, okay? And I know the retailer won't want to take the hit, and I know that the user spending the money won't want to take the hit. So it's kind of down to the token want to take a nine percent hit and commercially that might sound or marley it might sound fantastic but commercially it makes no sense either to to take that hit uh, you know for, for all the transactions that could potentially happen so what we're actually looking at is a model where obviously the nft marketplace will come out once we have our own blockchain but we're looking at obviously and we have our own blockchain 
we'll have a new contract on that and voice token will move from the Binance smart chain onto our blockchain. So at that point, we'll have the ability, because it will be a new contract at that point, to reduce the transactional tax from 9% right down. Um, and we're thinking of kind of between 1% and 2%, which is maybe what Stripe payments worldwide might take for from the retailer in, in terms of their commissions on, on any purchase. So we'd be right in, in, in terms of that payment gateway side of things in, 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 in the nominal tax percentage. At the, at the low end, basically. Um, and that allows us to, to do that. Now, what that means is obviously, well, now, how, how do we get 4%? Well, the thing is, we can't. But we should, at that point, have a hell of a lot more transactions running through. So now we can give them 1% of that. So if it's a 1.5% tax, the charity will take 1%, two-thirds. And the other half percent go back to the company in terms of maintaining development and, and roadmap and so on. But again, that can only be a realistic goal once we've got enough volume to achieve that. Sure, sure. I, I like your answer to that, mainly because you even asked it deeper than what I was asking. I, I, I wasn't even considering the fact that, you know, people, somebody's got to pay for that 9%. And, you know, like you said, the, the merchant doesn't want to and the customer doesn't want to. But what you said, something that kind of struck with me is that already people are paying merchant fees. You know, the, the stores are paying the merchant fees for Visa, MasterCard or whatever. And they pay for that and they don't get a tax write off for it. But, you know, in many, many countries, if you, uh, you know, uh, donate something to charity, you get a tax yeah. write off for that Absolutely. amount. And, and I think they would rather pay, you know, like you said, one, 2%, something like that off mm. the top and be able to write it off. There's a reason exactly. why whenever I go to the store, someone says, would you like to round up your whatever to be able to donate yeah. to this cause? And uh, yes, I do, but I don't get the write off for it. They get the millions of dollars of write off for it's, it. For you know, all it, that it, it makes a lot of financial sense to do it that way. Um, but obviously we've got to get to that point, you know, so like we, we, we've thought it through. It doesn't mean we won't have hurdles. It doesn't mean we won't have things we hadn't thought of, but we've thought of as much as we could at this stage of the game. Um, and it, it does make financial sense. It is viable. And, you know, that's the key thing. If it's financially viable, then we can do it. Because technically, you know, building the tech is not necessarily the issue. You know, it's it's making it commercially viable so that it is something that can be achieved globally. Um, and, and without those two together, you're in trouble. But I think, I think it, it, you know, the way we're looking at it certainly feels like it, it, it will work, you know. Sure. Absolutely. So I'm about to get you to kind of tell a little bit about your pre-sale because I definitely want to hit that hard. But before I get to that, I want to ask about as we get up to the sale and whenever you finally launch and your, your tokens out there in the wild, what do you have plans for for marketing? Because you could have the greatest token in the world with the greatest team, but if nobody knows about it, nobody's going to invest in it. So what do you have planned for besides airdrop <laughs> that you want to yeah, do to be able to let the world know? Yeah, so like we're obviously doing all the things that everybody else is doing, okay? And and I, you know, as a non-marketer, I'm a techie guy, you know. But so I've learned the hard way about the marketing sides in the crypto world over over the last number of months, just how mad it is. But you know, there's key things, obviously, all the very the social channels which we we've set up, and and we're building a team of moderators around those. And um, Telegram being the most active for us at the moment, but but obviously you've got the Instagrams, the Reddit. Twitters, you know, like we have about nine and a half thousand Twitter followers, but at the same time, you know, when, when, when you, when you grow that fast, you realize there's probably a hell of a lot of bots inside there that you can't control, you know? So how many of those are people, how many of those, which, which you're discovering on all these channels, how many are real and how many are fake, but we're building all of those. And we have a team of people now that we're slowly, you know, getting that out. In fact, today we just started uh, our Chinese community on Telegram. So again, we have a, a position open for a Chinese moderator and we have a three or four decent CVs that we're looking at to get the right people, you know, and we're contacted all the time and um, every day by hundreds of people trying to market with us. And to be honest, we, we, we just ignore them all because most of them, as far as I'm concerned, are a waste of time. So we've, we've only chosen to work with, you know, and market in the places where that have been recommended to us. Okay. And um, so again, the social channels and um, obviously doing AMAs, I mentioned we've this one now and we have two tomorrow night. And again, those are two channels which um, have a small following, but again, non botted entirely investor related people that want to get into, um, in, in, into voice token. So, you know, I expect to, if we don't get a jump from the AMA on, on the pre-sale now off of this AMA, I, I certainly expect it on, on, on those two tomorrow as well. But so there's that going on. And, and I think we'll continue to do AMAs. And um, as you can probably tell, I don't mind talking. So, you know, I, I think putting videos out there, keeping people updated as, as to what we're doing on a regular basis is, is going to be important for us as well. And and for people to be able to feel like they know us, I think that's that's going to be hugely important. We've got Man, our, with, with community. Yes, yeah, sorry. 
Oh, I was just going to say communication is the great deodorant. You know, anything yeah. that, that somebody doesn't trust or something like that of a token, if you mm -hmm. communicate well and communicate often, it will it will cover a lot of sins for sure. Absolutely, absolutely. So, yeah, we, as of only kind of today, actually, it was stroke kind of maybe midnight last night, we got our poo coin account verified. So um, the ads are starting that. As soon as I come off this AMA, actually, those are going up. Our graphic designer has been working on all those ads today. So those will probably kick on in poo coin for, from tonight onwards. And will probably continue on into the future, you know, depending on what we require from them, you know. And I, I'm also a firm believer, and I think this is probably to do with my, my, I suppose, my mainstream tech background, but I'm a firm believer in mainstream media as well, you know, not just the digital side of things. And I, I don't want our team and our organization just to get caught up with, uh, we'd throw out a Reddit post every day, you know. To me, that's not good enough. So, you know, we are working and have have negotiated um, are in negotiations, should I say, with with a couple of mainstream uh, media companies. So, just as an example, I, I did an interview about three weeks ago. I think it was maybe four weeks ago, three and a half, four weeks ago, with NBC Radio in California, talking about voice token. So, you know, we're we're and then that's online. You can you can check that out on our, our Telegram group as well. You know, so it was kind of a twenty minute call that they segmented down to about two minutes to get some live radio uh, airtime. But but again. And, you know, we're, I, I would certainly be a big fan of pushing this in the mainstream, in the newspapers, in the mainstream media, in the TV, other than just digital. I know digital is hugely important, but we'll be we'll be tackling all, all, all the mainstream as well, without a doubt. And, and not just this week and next week, not just, you know, for the next three days while our presale is open. Continue. No, I'm real, I'm, yeah, I'm interested in that. You, I'll definitely watch that interview, first of all. That, that sounds really yeah. cool that you jumped into that because I can't think of many projects that I've done AMAs with that, that want to get into the mainstream. They're so into the Telegram yeah. and the Discord and all that. I don't know yeah, that. I, 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 I don't want to tarnish the good projects that are out there or the genuine projects, but I think the reason that's happening is because there's so many ungenuine or disgenuine, you know, whatever you want to, you know, there's so many illegitimate projects out there. They don't want to be on mainstream media. They don't want to hold their hand up and, and there's a bunch of people hiding behind wallet addresses and and look it's so easy to to to, to just put yourself out there if you're genuine raise your hand say who you are say what you're about do it the right way and you know if people if people see that they're more likely to trust your project now that's only step one but step two is they've got to trust the fact that you've got the number one team to deliver what you're saying you're going to deliver and i think if you've got those facets you're, you know you're on a winner doesn't mean that people are going to jump off the AMA and, and, and jump on our pre-sale. I certainly hope they do. But, you know, all, all we can do is say that we are who we are. We're genuine. We're experienced. Our profiles will show you that both on, you know, Telegram, on our website and on LinkedIn. We're there to see for, for the world to see. OK, and we're not we're certainly not hiding. Um, and we're an experienced team. So the facets that we're bringing to the table is absolutely huge. We're not just three guys who decided to do it in, in a pub and, and learned it as we went along. So it, it's experience as well as being available to, to the community um, and, and then actually having the capability of delivering that. So, you know, we've all had ideas, but who delivers them? OK, so we've got yeah. to actually implement what we're going to say. And, I, you know, I've spent a lot a lot of my life delivering projects for, for various organizations around the world and um, both my own and third party, you know, so and um, so I, I certainly have this experience to bring this to a commercial viable outcome you know and and what we need now is people just to buy in that's the key thing if, if we don't if we don't get people buying in on the pre-sale it's all for nothing sure sure i get that uh i uh, see a question by tom merlin and i will get to that in a moment but first i want to ask something that i saw in your white paper which uh yes. Stephen said something earlier yes i do read white papers i need a t-shirt that says i'll read your white paper because <laughs> I, I especially for amas i do but in it you discuss i'm assuming it's you it's written in a first person it says uh talking about your burning of tokens you discuss that you don't really agree with the logic of burning tokens to drive the price up is it and first of all I agree with you, but uh, we don't need to get into why I agree with you. Everybody wants to hear from you. Is it life experience that makes you come to that conclusion? Uh, what what makes you feel that burning tokens is not going to drive the price it's, up sufficiently? It, it's not that it's not going to drive the price up. Burning tokens might have a direct or indirect effect in terms of the pre-sale and, and, and the initial launch that drives prices up. Oh, it's deflationary or it's hyper deflationary. And people get excited and go, wow, you know, supply demand, it has to go up. We're squeezing it. Um, that's fine, but I, I'm not interested in a pump and dump at all. I don't want voice token to shoot up 100x in 24 hours and shoot down 100x the next day. That has no, that no. It might interest your 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 members, and I'm quite sure there's a lot of them there would love that. 
but it, it doesn't interest me. I'm far looking for a longer curve, a longer curve in that growth, a more sustainable curve, because a pump and dump is not sustainable. We pump and dump in one day, you know, some people make money and some don't. And then and then it's it's dead, it's gone, it's over. You know, you spend, how, how, how do you come back from that? It's it's next to impossible. There will be some tokens will survive those kind of things, but most will not. Um, so, so burning the token to me is a gimmick. I think it was a gimmick to try and get people to buy their token that they're going to say, oh, it's going to drive demand and you know, all this kind of rubbish. Um, but mathematically speaking, it is a certain death. There's no two ways about that. And, and the higher your transactions are, and, and the more transactions you have on, on whatever exchanges you choose to be on, and most people start with PancakeSwap, but, but you know, in, in six to 12 months, we expect Voice Token to be on a lot more than just one exchange. You know, we'll, we'll have liquidity pools in, 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 in multiple exchanges. Um, so it makes no sense to burn tokens because the more transactions you have, the more you're burning, and eventually you will drown. That's it. It is a mathematical certainty. And you might survive for six to 12 months at best, but beyond that, you're dead. Well, you know, what I think of it is it does sometimes raise hype, usually by people that don't quite understand the economics of things. Yeah. To me, burning would only matter because everybody thinks, oh, it's a supply and demand thing. But you have to have that demand and the demand is what drives everything. If there's a demand for your token, then maybe burning does something. But I'm telling you, and I don't have to tell you, it sounds like you are on the same side. Burning for burning's sake, unless you're just trying to drive hype, I don't know that it's going to do anything for even your price. I mean, uh, it's just... And, and, and even, even at the start, to be honest, we looked at would we burn? And, and the first version of our white paper actually had burning in there. And it... You know, it didn't take much to, to convince me that we were wrong. You know, it's the wrong thing to do. Now, listen, there will be guys out there and girls out there who've set up their tokens who will absolutely refute that. And they'll say, no, they're right to do it. And best of luck to them. But you won't see us doing it. Full stop. Sure, sure, sure. Okay, so you're getting close to the, uh, you know, the launch. And you're right now you're on pink sale. Or if anybody doesn't know, you can get into their pre-sale on pink sale and if somebody could put up a link to that pink sale right in the telegram chat i would really appreciate it but tell people a little bit about the uh you know about where they can get it what they can do to learn more about the token okay so it, it's on pink sale and, and and that's available both on our website the, the actual direct link to pink sale is on our website it's also available in our telegram group and as, as you just mentioned i think it's going to go out on your own group just now as well so buy-in is, is point one of a BNB, and and to be honest with you, most of, of, of the buy-ins over the last kind of, you know, few hours and whatnot today, building up to this AMA, have been quite small, and um, people buying in, but I think when I checked a little bit earlier, it was 19 or 20 BNB, our soft cap is 100 BNB, but really this AMA and the PooCoin ads going out, you know, in the next hour or two, followed by two further AMAs tomorrow, and with a whole host of other digital advertising and so on, is is how we expect to get to the soft cap in, in the next 24, 48 hours. Um, it, it runs till Friday, but, you know, I do expect it to fill out. There's no doubt, you know. And I think if people if people take a step back and realize, you know, for a second, we are not and never want to be endpoint. That's not what we're about. So if that's what you're after, go 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 for the next Floki baby token. Best of luck. <laughs> And I, 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 and I mean that, but but if, if if you're looking for a genuine investment, which is longer term, not buy today, sell tomorrow morning, this is absolutely it. This this token is going places and will be around when all the rest are gone. You know, so and um, ho hopefully hopefully there's enough in tonight's AMA to prove that to people that you know if you want to chase a quick dollar, go somewhere else. But I can guarantee if you make a quick dollar in one, you lose it on the next. You know, that's just gambling. So. Absolutely. Excellent. Uh, so one of the things you just said, and I just want to make sure I heard it right, is you said a PooCoin ad has been submitted and it's going to go live when? Yeah. So, yeah, so we have our account and we're just, I'm just literally waiting on our graphics guys. So there's a whole bunch of different banners and dimensions that are going up on, on it tonight and it's, it's ready to go. Yeah. So I think in the next hour or two, we'll actually start seeing those on PooCoin. Awesome. And if anybody actually sees one in the wild, screenshot it and put it here in the airdrop telegram or mm -hmm. head over to uh, the voice telegram and put it over there as well. Because uh, I don't know, I always like to see them whenever they come. And here's what I say is good. I, I do believe that PooCoin ads work. I think they're overly expensive, but I think they do work. Uh, they, they and do. so, and I, and I think it's a fantastic name for a website. <laughs> you know, it's great. Whenever they first came out, which wasn't that long ago, uh, I think everybody kind of thought that's kind of silly. It's kind of cute, whatever. Yeah. But uh, man, they've really, I mean, they're, 
especially in the BSC space, I mean, you don't find really a project that isn't linking to PooCoin. So yeah, uh, good for them. <laughs> good for them to Absolutely. turn it into so, something. Yeah, we, we, yeah we, we, we were liaising with them over the last week or so. And as I said, like kind of in the last 12 hours, so we got finally got verified so that we could advertise, you know, so that, that's good. That's good. So that that's great. And I think the reason I bring up this poo coin part is a lot of people, if they are looking to join into a pre-sale and if they see that, oh, this is starting off slowly, they may think, oh, I'm not even going to even bother with this. But if you have that intel, if you listen and do your own research and go to, you know, AMAs, things like that, and you hear like, okay, they've actually got poo coin ads coming up, then maybe you'll be more inclined to be able to say, okay, okay, they actually have some marketing that's coming behind this to to help out so a couple we have a very smart uh, group here at airdrop and uh, they look at all kinds of things you heard uh, Steven asking about multi or excuse me about starting your own blockchain earlier um, I've got Tom in here as well and he asked a question that I wanted to go but oh okay he wanted to say he's not seen anything he's looking over your contract okay because that's what everybody does is they'll look over mm -hmm. uh, you know not even contract but uh, what you're saying about it and he says he's not seeing anything about you having a multi-sig um, for your project. And he says, that's a big trust aspect, as we all know here at Airdrop, because we've partnered with some projects that did not have multi-sig that could have benefited from multi-sig. So um, has that ever been anything that you've considered is having your uh, contracts uh, for anything major to be changed on it to be put up with multi-sig? Um, we, we had considered it. We chose not to do it in the end. And, and one of the key things is because we, we know that in the future, and this probably ties in with the liquidity pool as well. It's a very similar answer to if you were to ask about the liquidity pool. The liquidity pool is locked for 30 days, okay? And people are going, well, that, that, you're going to rug pull in 30 days. And obviously we're not. But the reasons why, why is it not? We, we realize that there's almost certainly going to be scenarios in the next six, nine, 12 months where the contract will need to get a renovation okay and multi-sig will probably be that we chose not to do that at the very outset and um, I, I certainly don't feel like it's an issue at this stage and um, in, in terms of that because you know it's me you're looking at i i am that guy you know so um, and and you know I, I feel that i've put enough of myself out there to prove to people that this is not a rope pull and this is not a scam so the fact that it's single signature and i'm that guy and um, I, I think people need to just trust in that for now you know well, for the liquidity portion, one of the reasons why I think it's good to not have it, you know, forever. Some people will put it for, you know, 75 years or something. One of the reasons yeah, yeah. I think is you may want to move it. You know, let's say Pancake Swap moves from version yeah. two to version three. You're going to need to be able to pull that liquidity out to go to their new version three because it's a mess. Yeah, look, te technology, you know. At the end of the day, technology is only as good as the people who build it, okay? And so, you know, all these smart contracts, in fact, our own smart contracts has gone for audit as of tonight. So we should have an answer back in, you know, 48 to 72 hours on that. And again, because of the team of people that we have building it, I, I don't have any qualms about, about there being issues with it. But, you know, you we've locked for 30 days. People have put that down as being a rug pull, and which I think is absolutely bizarre, you know, without actually backing up that statement. I think it's, it's, it's the most ridiculous statement you can get. But um, when you look at the reasons why we done that and you just you just hit the nail on the head what if we need to move from pancake swap depending on how we grow this you know we're, we're pancake swap is not where we're going to stay you know there's just no doubt about that and um, so we need to have that facility and i think anyone i put this out in telegram earlier tonight in fact to, to another gentleman on our own group and I, I said you know people are tokens that do lock for a crazy amount of time are probably going to regret that at some point you know whether they're genuine or not, they're going to regret, re regret that the fact that they can't do what they need to do, they can't evolve, they can't maybe redirect where they need to go. So um, so I think we need to give her that. And, and the obvious thing to do is do it at the start, because if there are changes or critical changes within the first four weeks, we don't want to wait six months to have to make those changes. We want to get that done because there's going to be community people depending on us. Sure, sure. And thank you for that answer. I think one of the things that Tom was looking for uh, less with like contract renouncement, because obviously a contract renouncement, like you said, you're, you're locked into whatever it says. Mm -hmm. But, you know, with multi-sig, you can make sure that you don't have, you know, let's say it's not you. I don't know if you're the only one that holds yeah. the keys, the, the private keys to uh, the wallets. Uh, but, you know, if for some reason you had a rogue person on your team that they would mm -hmm. need, you know, three, sig you know, you'd need two of three signatures mm -hmm. before, you know, funds could be drained. That way you make sure no 
one ever does anything unscrupulous. So I think that's probably where he was well, I, headed I, I, I with think, that question. Yeah, because I, I'm going to just cut in. And I think going back to multi sig, like it will become that. There's no doubt. We just chose not to do it at the very outset. And um, like our team will grow and evolve, and we don't know where that will lead. Okay. Um, and obviously, we don't want the entire platform and organization dependent on on just me. Because if I'm run over by a bus, then what happens? You know. So. <laughs> You know, no, but like these are the realities of, of having a business, you know, and having dependencies of an entire community looking at what's going on. So, you know, multi sig is certainly going to be there, it's just not there yet. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Well, you sound like you've got, I mean, if I'm to do a review over our AMA thus far, you gave a really interesting story about basically why you are in this, why voice token is for the homeless. And that's because you got on the edge of that yourself, which I think is phenomenal to use your own life experience to be able to create something that could be better for other people. I actually saw a homeless person near where I lived the other day and their sign had a Venmo on it. It had, you know, so, uh, you know, it, it, homeless, you know, may they have access to phones, they have access to the internet, yeah. and they may actually be looking for a digital way to help. But you are looking more less to help, you know, directly to the homeless and more to homeless charities. Do I understand that correct? Yes, at the outset, but we, we have, and I, I'm going to give you an example here, actually, because there, there's a gentleman who's homeless on the streets of Cork, where, where I live. No, I had never, I've never actually physically met the guy. I've heard of him, but I've, I've never spoken to myself. Um, and, and there was a video recently done through the organization, uh, Cork Simon, where they did a, a, video, a kind of a two minute video on this particular gentleman. And he's about 50 years of age and he's been on the streets since about the age of 15 or 16. So it's a hell of a long time. Um, and he's a phenomenal artist. Like, you know, he shows some of his art that he, he, he draws and, and so on in, in the video. And he's really a phenomenal artist. And I'm thinking like of, of a guy like that and, and all the other homeless people, you know, that have talents that maybe the world doesn't know. But this particular gentleman is a prime example, you know, that where we can help not just the charity, but straight to that guy. Imagine you setting up an NFT for him with his art. And, and having a promotional campaign all around him to get him off the streets, actually put a roof over his head that he can call his own. And um, so, you know, there's those kinds of opportunities, which I think are, we, we can't dismiss those at this stage. And um, it's not exactly what we're starting with, but, but I think as we evolve and as, as, as the community grows and as, as what we're doing grows, I think we have, we have to look at those direct interactions with, with homeless people. And, um, you know, for me, I think that would be really rewarding, you know? You know, I'm not saying you would do this for the notoriety, but you mentioned mainstream media earlier. I think if somehow you were able to directly help a homeless person rather than with a charity, I think local news channels would want to cover that. Um, and like I, I said, so. I know that's not your motivation, but it, it, it would be a benefit. But I think I, but like the motivation isn't for me to get on the screen. The motivation is that it indirectly or directly helps the organization and help the community and help what we're doing, which in turn helps the charity. So it feeds on itself. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy in some respects, but but we have to start somewhere, <laughs> you know, like, you know, what, what, one of our products that we want to do, and it's not necessarily a new product and, you know, is voice pay. You know, we want the ability of people to have, you know, technically their, their voice visa card and be able to go to an ATM or pay for their food in a restaurant and, 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 the transaction from voice token to fiat currency, currency happens instantaneous. You know, that technology isn't new. I remember, you know, having that for, for, for Bitcoin many years ago, going to the local ATM here in Cork and pulling out 200, you know, excuse me, 200 euros. And, you know, my Bitcoin account dropped. And then five minutes later, Bitcoin price went up and I had my 200 euros back. Um, but I think, I think the ability as well of, of taking voice pay and actually giving those cards to the homeless as well, you know, so that they just never go hungry. You know, like that, that voice card, voice pay card can be tied to a pool of funds that just feeds them, you know, that they don't have to worry about begging on the street for money. So there's a, there's a whole world of possibility that we can eventually get to. And I don't know how it's going to play out. I really don't. I don't have that crystal ball, but we certainly as a team have a hell of a lot of ideas and things that we can do. And we hope we get the opportunity to do a lot of them. So before I, I, I send you on your way, I do want to ask about one thing is I'm hearing about this card thing, which I think is really smart to be able to give somebody a card and you could, you know, you could, you know, inject it with funds or, you know, with voice token. But especially initially, whenever your volume is not going to be what it might be whenever you were to that point, uh, would it affect the charts really adversely if you gave voice token to a certain homeless charity and then they converted it, you know, to B&B &B or, or whatever they might have converted to, would there be a, would that mess with the chart? 
it's it's not going to mess with the chart because the the the, the contract's already taken care of auto BNB anyway. So as soon as the transaction takes place, let's say you sell a thousand dollars of voice token, and 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 nine percent of that is your transaction tax. Four percent that's automatically going to BNB anyway for the charity. So, so that's already been done. Do you know, um, it, it it's really oh. a case side of a, a secondary pool, which is specifically voice token pool. Okay, and um, it's at that point, of course. Of course, it can mess with the chart, but it only messes with the chart in terms of massive volume or massive transactions, you know. But again, we, you know, as we progress and as we evolve, you know, the you know new contracts that will come out on, on the voice chain, we can take into consideration those kinds of things, putting limits on them, you know, limit spends and so on and so forth, you know, over a period of time, you know, um, you know, giving giving a, a homeless person access to ten thousand isn't necessarily the, the wisest thing in the world to do, but you can limit that spend that every day that they have enough every day to, to get through or something like that. But look, those are the economics that we haven't teased out yet, but um, we certainly won't do anything to the detriment of, of the community as a whole either way. Sure. Well, I love that you're thinking about it already. I mean, almost everything that I've asked, because, you know, I've asked some, you know, tougher questions here that uh, I feel like at the least you've already been considering it and thinking and mulling over the different options. And you understand that you don't have to make every decision, you know, right now. No, uh, that, you that can't. <laughs> Even if we wanted to, we couldn't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's exactly right. Well, everybody make sure you head over. Um, here's what you should start doing, everybody. This is not financial advice. It's what you should do for your own research advice is head over to the voice token telegram if somebody can put up a link to that head over there you're gonna find uh stephen collins here the gentleman we're speaking to he'll be over there but some of the rest of his team will be over there as well and they can answer um, other questions that you may have that maybe I didn't. It's kind of my job to be able to ask questions that I think you, the listener, are looking for, but you may want to get into a straight up conversation with one of their team or one of their community members to say like, hey, is everything that uh, he's saying about your community true? Are you really a good, vibrant community? Head over there, ask the questions. And here's what I'll say to, to you, uh, Stephen, is don't be a stranger over here. Uh, you know, sure. airdrop is made that you can make airdrop work for you as long as you make yourself, you know, visible over here. In other words, I see you here today on the AMA. We're seeing some different things that y'all are doing, but post launch, come back over here. If you've got a big promotion that you're doing, if you're doing, yeah. I don't know, a, a tax free weekend or, you know, that's some, yeah, some yeah. kind of promotion, come over here and say so. And we know, I guarantee you, many of the uh, airdrop people in here could tell us what uh, token founders come in here often, or even have a representative from that token come in here often. And it makes, you know, top of mind, it's almost like an advertising network. If you come in here and say it a lot, you know, we see you, you know, set, they say you need it seven times to be able to do something. So even if people don't buy in the pre-sale and they end up, uh, you know, buying, you know, post-sale, Come on in here. Don't be sh uh, shy. One other thing I'll say, and this is, you know, after you're fully, uh, you know, released and everything, every Wednesday, uh, I run an AMA that's just an open mic. Okay. It's free of charge to anybody of our partners. And I give two to three minutes of, uh, of mic time uh, to each token partner. So you can come in here, give a quick little blurb of what's going on. And uh, yeah, this will this and any of you airdrop people that are listening now, that'll be tomorrow. And we will do it where, uh, you know, you may hear from just me if nobody joins in, but many times we have other token partners that want to tell I'll, us. I'll, I'll make sure you're not alone. I'll make sure you're not alone. I'll, I'll come on a few weeks. There's no fear. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Love that. Could, Would could, love could that. I just say, could I just say one final, I don't know if, if there's any other questions from the audience, but, but I, I obviously I, I don't know if the audience are aware we've, we've kind of partnered with airdrop and there, there is going to be a voice token airdrop at, at some point in, in the very, very short term, I believe. So, you know, whatever way you, you want to configure that going out to various different wallets and so on and so forth. That's great. But um, I, I just want to make the point, of, you know, the people that are listening on this and, 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 and the wider community that will hopefully hear about voice token as well in, in airdrop. Don't just wait for your airdrop folks, get on the pre-sale, you know, let, let's make this actually happen because, you know, I, I don't want this to be a case of we, we nearly made it, you know, we nearly did this. We nearly did you know, people saying that why why isn't this, the the presale filling? It can only fill if you participate. So you know, don't talk about it. Just get online and do it. 
Love that. Which you, yeah, you almost stole my thunder for my next question, but I'm going to go ahead and ask <laughs> yeah. it because I, I feel like you can, well, I feel like you can reword this, and this will be my last question. But uh, it's going to be the traditional elevator pitch. Okay, we're on an elevator. We're on the 20th floor. You meet me on the 20th floor. You see that I could be a potential buyer. Okay, uh, you can see that maybe I have a heart for the homeless, and you have until we get to the bottom of this elevator on the first floor to convince me that voice token is absolutely where I need to be spending my time. What do you say to me? You got. 20 floors. Stop wasting your time with mem coins. Stop wasting your time with coins that don't have a genuine team. Stop wasting your time with coins that are trying to give you this 100,000 X crap in the first week, two weeks, okay? Pick a coin that has a lifeline. Pick a, a coin with, with a pulse that's going to be here in three years, four years, five years, because they're the coins that if you're looking to make, make retirement money, they're the coins that will make it for you. And Voice Token is absolutely that coin. Voice Token will be here when all all the rest have come and gone, okay? And we're also doing it to help the homeless. So, you know, if you want to make money, great, but there's going to be a moral aspect to this as well. We're going to change the world. We just hope you're with us when, when we do it.